If you are just starting out in Final Cut Pro and you're a little unsure of how to use the software and you don't even know where to begin, today's tutorial should make you feel a lot more confident. I've once again teamed up with an incredibly knowledgeable Final Cut Pro editor whose channel is loaded with incredible tips for beginners all the way up to more advanced users. My man, Serge. Hey Dylan, thanks for having me. Super excited to be here again. The first thing I want to talk about today is how Final Cut Pro stores and organizes your media. When you import your media into Final Cut Pro, it's organized into three levels, libraries, events, and projects. I'm going to try to use a metaphor to help explain this. Say, all your video clips you shot is a big pile of clothes. To help you store all your clothes, you get a dresser. This is your Final Cut Pro library, one big container to store all your clothes, or in this case, your media. To help you organize your clothes in your dresser, you have individual drawers. In a Final Cut Pro library, the dresser drawers are your events. These are smaller containers to help you organize your media. You can have a separate event for each day you shot, or if you use different cameras, you have each one in its own event. It doesn't matter how you organize your media. The point here is organize your media using different events. So when you need a specific clip, you know exactly where to find it. Just like you would use dresser drawers to organize your clothes. The last level of media in Final Cut Pro is your projects. These are like outfits you choose to wear. You pick and choose items from your dresser, match them together, add a few accessories, and put together an outfit that looks good and serves its intended purpose. The outfit you just put together is your Final Cut Pro project. You pick and choose the media you want to use, put it all together so it flows nicely, add some music and text, which is your accessories, and build a final outfit, which is your finished video. Tip number two is a way to help you set up your libraries to save space on your computer and hard drives. And this will help to prevent a lot of hair pulling down the road. Trust me. First and foremost, I would suggest not editing your projects on your computer's hard drive. Our computer's hard drive space is generally pretty limited, so you'll be surprised how big your Final Cut Pro files will get, and pretty soon your computer's hard drive will fill up and you'll get this message. A solid method to take is having an external hard drive to edit on. Once you have that, here's how you set up to saving to that in Final Cut Pro. When you create a new library, hit this drop down menu and select that external hard drive. Now with the new library selected, click File and Library Properties. Your inspector window will pop up over here and you'll click Modify Settings. Set the media to In Library and Cache as well. Now all of the media you add will be stored in this library on the external hard drive. If you've already created a library on your computer's hard drive, make sure you exit out of Final Cut first Locate that library, hold command, and drag it onto your external hard drive. Double click to open. And once Final Cut is open, you'll go through these same steps that we just went through. Hit file, library properties, and once again, change your media and cache to in library. If you have some media in this library that's not on this external hard drive that we just put the library on, you can click consolidate here. This will copy the media to the library so that if you plug your hard drive into a totally different computer that has Final Cut, you'll have all the media you need to edit. Last thing I suggest to save space is to turn off background rendering. Hit the shortcut Command and Comma and deselect background render. This isn't needed because when you export your project, Final Cut will do the rendering then. Keeping it on will cause your libraries to become huge and it can slow down the editing process while editing as well. Tip number three is understanding and utilizing optimized and proxy media. When you import and edit a video in Final Cut Pro, you have three options. You can edit camera native video, which is a file that comes straight out of your camera, or you can convert your media to either optimized or proxy media. Camera native file types like H.264 or HEVC tend to be highly compressed codecs and can be hard to edit, especially on older machines. So when you import your media, you have the option to convert it to optimized media, proxy media, or both. Selecting optimized media converts your files to a ProRes 422 codec, which is optimized for editing and color. The quality of clips doesn't change, but these files can be much easier to edit than camera native files. The downside to optimized media is file size. These files can be over 10 times bigger than your original media files. If hard drive space is an issue, proxy media may be a better option. When you convert your files to proxy media, you can either choose ProRes Proxy or the H.264 codec. The ProRes Proxy codec is designed to be easier to edit, and even though the file sizes can still be larger than your camera files, they're not nearly as big as ProRes 422. The H.264 codec is optimized for size, 
using considerably less space than even your camera native files, and is a great option if you want to edit on the go, but don't want to log around unnecessary equipment. The downside to proxy media is you're giving up quality, but that's only during your edit. Final Cut Pro allows you to easily switch back to original media with just a couple of clicks, so you can edit your project using proxy media and switch back to your original files before export for a full quality export of your project. Tip number four is to put some time into learning Final Cut Pro keyboard shortcuts. These shortcuts will make your time editing easier and really speed up your editing workflow. There's a keyboard overlay you can buy from Editor's Keys, which I'll put a link in the description for, that shows you some of them. It's pretty handy, but here are a few of my favorite ones to help you out in the meantime. Pretend I want to delete everything after this point in the clip. Normally, I could press B to bring up the blade tool, make the cut, and then delete. Or I can press Command B to make a cut where the playhead is, and then delete. But a faster way is to align my playhead where I'd like the cut to be and press Option Right Bracket. It makes the cut and deletes everything after. To cut and delete everything to the left of the playhead, you'll press Option and Left Bracket. Here's another shortcut. Say I really want to move this clip from the primary storyline, but the problem is, when I do, I drag all of the sound effects or footage or whatever you have attached to it with it. Press the tilde key, which looks like a little wave by the escape key on your keyboard, and then drag the clip. That'll let you move the clip, but keep the connected media in the same spot on the timeline. If you want to delete a clip, pressing delete would delete all the connected media with it. So like we just learned, hit the tilde key and then press delete. Also, it is good for me to mention that if you are not using a US keyboard, you'll have to map this function to a key of your choosing. I'll link a video in the description that shows you how you can easily do this. If these tips helped you out, do us a favor and hit the thumbs up button and make sure to head over to Serge's channel to learn way more about Final Cut Pro. The man has a huge list of helpful videos. As always, I appreciate you guys watching and I will see you in the next one.